happy Wednesday, you all. I hope all is well. Um, today is Grammar Time Wednesday, so we know that we go over grammar on Wednesdays. And if you remember from Monday, I shared that we would go into depth with talking about linking verbs. And so I encourage you to look up the definition of linking verbs. <clears throat> and before um, we do that, um, I want us to go over what the linking verbs or the common linking verbs are is, am, are, was, were, be, being, been, okay? Um, there is a link that I will post in our classroom that may be helpful or beneficial for you to hear um, an explanation about linking verbs. And what I'll do right now is read one, okay? So a linking verb in traditional grammar, a linking verb is a verb that describes the subject by connecting it to a predicate adjective or a predicate noun. Unlike the majority of verbs, they do not describe any direct action taken or controlled by the subject. So remember there are two parts to the sentence. We have the subject part and the predicate part. The subject part of the sentence has the noun in it, and then the predicate part of the sentence has the verb, the action, and then like the you know, it could have prepositional phrases and all those various things, but there are two parts to the sentence. That's why we say we have to have a subject and a verb, okay? And so I share with you to look at your writing to identify whether or not you had any linking verbs in your writing, and I did. I had is and am. So our journal time, our sentence starter, our focus free write starter was I know. I wrote, I know the future is bright no matter how the light seems to flicker and fade. I can still see it. And that means there is still hope. Um, me, it's me. I am the light. I will persevere and overcome. I've already won. And I wrote this as a student. I wrote this as one of you all because I want you um, to be encouraged to know that in spite of the multiple changes that have happened, that you all have already overcome and you've won, okay? And so I'm going to take a look at the one of the is is and one of the am. So it says, I know the future is bright no matter how light, how the light seems to flicker and fade. And so I would just change that to, I know, y'all excuse Tinkerbell, please. I know the future shines brightly no matter how the light seems to flicker and fade. So I changed my first is to shines and I'll put this out, I'll, I'll scan this and put this in our um, on our classroom wall as well. Okay, so it the future is the noun shines is the verb. So it's shown it's an action, right? Instead of just um, connecting the subject part to the predicate part of the sentence and um, telling us like giving us a state of being which really is not as descriptive as using an action verb is okay um, then it also paints the picture of um, connecting to using figurative language because future is being compared to in your life is being compared to like a candle that's shining um, that um, so in the positive sense it might seem a flicker of flame but it doesn't because it's still shining through, right? And like with you all, as the candles, your light will continue to shine, okay? Um, Tinkerbell, excuse me. Tinkerbell. Um, okay, and so um, that is an example of taking a linking verb and really thinking about what you want the subject to say to make it an action, all right? And then I also share with you all on yesterday that, um, well, for Tuesday, for our article of the week, well, she hears the plane. We live close to Barksdale. Breathe, Tinkerbell. So as you can see, um, I posted this in our Google Classroom yesterday. I have my annotations on there where I actively read and engaged with the text and engaged, excuse me, with the text. And I share with you all, you all know that that's a part of deeper reading and really understanding what we're reading so that we can um, discuss it with um, substance rather than being general, okay? Um, 
And so you can share in the comments, like what were some of your thoughts? I actually tried last night um, and I put my phone in black and white scale. It was very interesting. The only thing I didn't like about it was that I couldn't see the color of the emojis, like the heart, so I could know which heart I was using. Or I really couldn't see, um, um, it wasn't as vivid, but I really do think that it kind of connected to, well, maybe I will be more or less apt to constantly check my um, social media platforms to see if there's engagement, generating site, or um, generating, um, excuse me, traffic to my website, traffic to my um, conference. And so um, I really enjoyed the article because it just connects to an ongoing thought process I have about my cell phone. Um, and I believe I've shared with you all before that I typically had a rule where when I have a landline phone, when I get into the um, my apartment or my house, or I turn my cell phone off and just rely on my landline because the, the very important people who need to get in touch with me have that number, right? That's, that's how I look at it. So it won't ring off the hook. And then I would just use my laptop um, or the computer at the time to do, what was laptop? To connect to the outside world through the internet if necessary because I think unplugging from our cell phones is definitely important. I um, want to encourage you all, the article is worth a great read and it encourages us to live outside of being attached to our phones and really experience life. The final thing that she says um, at the end, that the writer says at the end is, how many people on their deathbeds do you think are going to say, I wish I'd spent more time on Facebook? Keep asking yourself the same question again and again and again. This is your life. How much of it do you want to spend on your phone? Okay, y'all, so that is our segment for the day. And tomorrow I'm going to um, do a Google Meet video chat for us and we'll talk about some let's jam moments okay and how that still connects to our really understanding diction and tone and then i have an announcement for you all um jericho brown if y'all remember we read a couple of his poems this year you guys he won the 2020 pulitzer prize for poetry like that's amazing if you can take a minute and google the pulitzer prize and you'll see like how amazing that is okay i'll see y'all tomorrow